multi-touch input has been incorporated into an increasing amount of electronics. However, large multi-touch displays still remain fairly expensive. So with this project, we're going to build our own multi-touch display that can run on any operating system and reuses some pre-existing material. The concept behind this project is rather simple. In the design, we have a flat sheet of acrylic with infrared LEDs on two opposite edges. This allows light to pass through the material, so when a fingertip or other object presses against the surface, the beam gets obstructed and a light blob appears when viewed by a device that can see infrared light. Like a web camera or most, most any regular camera. These light blobs can then be sent into a computer by the web camera and then identified as an input source through the appropriate software. If we then hook the computer up to a projector, we can display the computer's image onto the sheet of acrylic and have it correspond with our touch input. The multi-touch design we decided on contains four legs that holds up the sheet of acrylic. Positioned directly underneath the surface is a projector and modified web camera that views the entire display and hooks up to our multi-touch software. To match the projector output of a 4x3 video ratio, we went with a sheet of acrylic that was evenly 18 by 24 inches and 0.2 inches thick. Web cameras have the ability to see infrared light that humans aren't able to, or at least most humans can't. However, we need to filter out all the other visible light to get a clear, isolated image of the infrared. To do this, we need to disassemble the web camera, locate the infrared filter, which will be attached to the camera's lens, and have a slight reddish or greenish tint to it. Then we remove this and replace it with a visible light filter. You can either buy a new visible light filter, or the more preferable solution is to reuse a couple squares of exposed film negatives. This technique gives us near dead consumer media some value. The filter needs to be cut to the same size as the previous infrared filter, then glued or taped into place and reattached to the camera. Now with our web camera infrared ready, we can move on to the frame of the multi-touch table. The frame can be made using a variety of materials depending on what you already have. Wood, bamboo, cardboard, uh, well maybe, uh, probably not. Well what we had were these 24 inch L shaped and loom pieces that should help make a pretty strong frame. For one of these sides, we need to start out by sawing one of these 24 inch pieces in half. This will match the 18 inch acrylic edge later on. Then overlap them on top of each other to form a C shape. After that we need to take two other 24 inch pieces, then fasten them on to the two edges of the C shape. By drilling two holes a half inch from each edge, and bolting them in. These will be our legs later on. Now to hold this whole shape together, we need to add a flat 18 inch piece of aluminum to the bottom and bolt it in just like we did before. For the other side, you can just repeat the same steps and come out with two identical sides. With our two halves finished, the important step comes of attaching all of our infrared LEDs. The C shape that we made before is going to be used to hold on the sheet of acrylic and it's also going to be used to hold the infrared LEDs up to the center of the acrylic's edge.
In order to accomplish this, we have to drill out 5mm holes to fit the 5mm infrared LEDs, one inch apart from each other along the bottom edge of the aluminum. We decided to go with one inch apart because this should give the acrylic a fairly nice even infrared glow at the end of the project. Now that the holes are ready, we can put each LED in with the longer lead, the positive side, pointing to the right, and the shorter lead, the negative side, pointing to the left. But before we actually begin that, we need to plan out the wiring and know what power source we're going to use. For power, you could use a USB connection, hook it up directly to your computer's power supply, or what we did was use a DC power adapter. Uh, this one happens to be a 9 volt one that we are able to find from an old electronic device of some kind. Not quite sure what. To know how to wire these LEDs, we can use a free online LED array wizard service that gives us back a full wiring diagram and tells us what resistors to use. We just have to take this diagram, get a hold of the right resistors, and solder in all the connections. To attach our sheet of acrylic, we had to drill two holes on both the acrylic and the aluminum C-shaped pieces, then bolt them together. The table should now be able to stand on its own. At this point, you can also remove the protective coating that comes with a sheet of acrylic. In order to hold the projector upright, we took one 24-inch aluminum piece and then added two brackets to it so the projector can pop into place. Then we bolted this piece to the bottom of our frame. With the modified web camera, we used a small piece of string to tie it onto one of the aluminum legs. You could also use glue or a zip tie. And then we pointed the lens towards our surface. Some last finishing touches that we need to add is to cover up all the exposed LED connections so they won't all break. For this we used a split piece of bamboo. Then we heat shrink the connection between the power adapter and the LEDs for the same reason. Also, for the projector not just to shine through the clear sheet of acrylic, we had to add a white thin sheet of plastic over it. Any type of tracing paper would work for this too. Now we're at the most exciting part, testing out our table. At least I think it's the most exciting part. Well now I have very low standards. Well anyway, we have to plug in everything and see if it all works. All of the Google Map, music, and game multi-touch integration might not be so important to some, but by reusing dying media, a USB camera, a non-pocket portable office projector, as well as some other materials, we were able to remake something absolutely new. Reusing and recycling is just one small part in our whole green picture or perhaps rather motion picture. Well, any, uh, all these different projects that we do do tend to help explore different concepts step by step, project by project, frame by frame. Although maybe all these are just the same project. Nah. Maybe. Ils sont coquilles, ils sont sacrés de patates. Venu 
de la verrerie, toujours la vérité, et ce marbre seul dans ses inubiscuités. Hello, this is Ravi Carlson from the Greener Business Show.